Good morning. Welcome to All Out Politics. The Conservative MP Sir Desmond Swain is under pressure this morning over comments that he made to an anti-vaccination campaign last November, telling them that NHS capacity figures were being manipulated to exaggerate the scale of the virus. He also said that he believed the wearing of masks to combat the virus was a matter of quote, social control. I'm going to speak to Sir Desmond in a moment. Earlier, the Cabinet Office Minister, Michael Gove, told Sky News Sir Desmond should apologise and retract his comments. Our political correspondent, Rob Powell, reports. Conservative MP Sir Desmond Swain in November last year speaking to Save Our Rights UK, a group that's advanced false claims about the COVID vaccine and organised anti-lockdown protests. The topic of discussion? the risk posed by the virus to the NHS. But it seems to be a manageable risk, particularly given the way that figures appear to have been manipulated. Um, mm -hmm. you know, we are told that there is a deathly, a deadly pandemic proceeding at the moment. That is difficult to reconcile. With there is no evidence of figures being manipulated, and at the time of this interview, deaths were 14% above the five-year average, according to the ONS. January the 15th this year, and Sir Desmond is giving another interview. It is my absolute honor and pleasure to be inviting uh, Sir Desmond Sweeney to uh, the high wire right now. This time it's to Del Bigtree, leader of an anti-vaccination group and former producer for disgraced anti-vax medic Andrew Wakefield, where he's asked about the UK's latest lockdown. Is there some other uh, desire to control the people that has nothing to do with health? Where are you at with that? There are aspects of this which I'm certain come down to social control, uh, like the wearing of masks. The, the, the medical case, you, you've just rub rubbished it. Earlier. Several studies have shown face masks can reduce the transmission of viruses. Hello. Hello, Sir Desmond. Yeah. Hello, hi, it's Rob Powell here calling from um, Sky News. I'm a political correspondent. Sir Desmond Swain wasn't available for an on-camera interview, but agreed to this phone call being recorded. On Del Bigtree, did you know who he was before you gave the interview? I've never heard of Del Bigtree. So he was someone that's anti-vaccine and has said that the COVID vaccine I, could be I, the greatest I, again, scientific blunder again, in the history I, of mankind. I, again, I state, you know, having a conversation with someone is not in any way associating yourself with his point of view. You're lending the credibility uh, of a member of parliament to some groups which have views uh, which are not backed up by any scientific evidence. Well, I, 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 you know, the, the, the point is this. We're a democracy. We believe, believe in free speech and free expression. But those who track anti-vax content online say Sir Desmond's comments will cost lives. People, of course, have been confused by um, a new pathogen, a new disease which has emerged. It's caused a lot of concern. And to see a member of parliament feeding off that concern, feeding the, feeding the beast, so to speak, is incredibly cynical, incredibly damaging, and will cost lives. Sir Desmond Sway. The former minister in the Commons, where a valid debate will continue about easing restrictions, but at such a perilous moment in the pandemic, many will question where and how this Tory MP has chosen to have this discussion. Rob Powell, Sky News in Westminster. Well, earlier this morning, the Minister of the Cabinet Office, uh, Michael Gove, called on Sir Desmond Swain to apologise for his comments. In the case of what Sir Desmond said, uh, I would hope that he would uh, uh, issue a full and complete retraction and apology for what he said. It's unacceptable. Uh, it, absent that, he should lose the whip then? Well, uh, I think that uh, uh, the first thing that should happen is that uh, Sir Desmond should apologise. Um, and then, of course, uh, consideration can be given to uh, any other steps that might be taken. But I think it's important that uh, 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 Sir Desmond has a chance to uh, retract, withdraw and say sorry for these comments. Well, Sir Desmond can speak for himself. Speak for himself. He joins me now live. Thank you very much indeed for being with me, Sir Desmond. I, I just want to ask you first of all whether you regret uh, those two interviews which you gave to uh, Save Our Rights UK and to uh, Dell Bigtree. I certainly regret the fuss that they've caused and being at the centre of a media storm when I would much rather the focus of today's news being on AstraZeneca and uh, its spat with the European Union. 
Do you accept that you you were wrong uh, in what you said back in November to Save Our Rights UK? It seems to be a manageable risk, particularly as the figures have been manipulated. We're told there's a deathly, deadly pandemic proceeding at the moment. That is difficult to reconcile with intensive care units actually operating at typical occupation levels for the time of year and us bouncing around at the typical level of deaths for the time of year. I mean, you were wrong, weren't you, uh, as it turned out? No, I think at the time, at the time, those were, that, that was a legitimate point of view. I accept entirely that the situation has changed and changed dramatically as a consequence of the new variant. But I think those were perfectly legitimate and widely held views uh, uh, at the time. Yeah, but, but, but they were wrong, weren't they? I mean, even at the time, I think uh, excess deaths were up 14% uh, on uh, normal, according to all the official statistics. And of course, now they're much higher than that. And whether you go by COVID-related deaths uh, or indeed uh, excess deaths, we're well over 100,000 now, aren't we? So, so you know, it, it, you were wrong then and you, and you accept that now, do you, with hindsight? No, no. Uh, all these statistics can be presented in a number of ways uh, and seen in the round. The reality is that we've had four years in the last five that make up the five year average uh, of relatively uh, benign performance, certainly w w with flu being suppressed. And therefore, being within 15 percent of the five year average is not untypical if you look uh, over the last uh, over the last decade or so, you will see that the years pop up and down to very significant extents. Well, hang on, uh, hang on, wait a minute. Um, I mean, we're now above fifteen percent. Uh, are you not accepting that excess deaths due to COVID are above one hundred thousand? Are you are you saying that that is inaccurate? No, no, I'm not saying that. I'm saying that I'm saying what I have said in the House of Commons. I have complained about the way that statistics have been presented and information uh, and data has, has been revealed. I, I have said that on the record in the House of Commons. No different to yeah, what I've said. Okay, but, it, but, but if, you, if, if you accept that there are more than 100,000 excess deaths, what are you complaining about? I mean, that, that, that's a fact, isn't it? And to question that or to talk about hidden agendas, that is fake news, isn't it? No, I, I complained about the way that data has been presented, as I have in the House of Commons on the record. Yeah, but what is your complaint? What is your complaint about how is it wrong for us to be given these statistics by the Office of National Statistics uh, uh, and other sources, ones which uh, reputable people uh, like Ed Conway and Chris Giles and uh, the Financial Times all have verified? Uh, what, what is wrong about the way it's being presented? I, I I've already answered your question, even if you didn't like the answer. These question, these da this data is presented in a particular way. We've seen various aspects of the way that the data was presented by government to parliament, which has unwound in the days afterwards and had to be represented. It's perfectly legitimate. Well, you haven't, to raise you concerns just haven't produced any. You haven't produced any evidence for that. You're making an assertion which is undermining people's perception of the scale of the problem. And you're not telling me. Sure. You're saying you're complaining about it, but you're not giving me any evidence of what of what's been done wrong so in your let's view. Take, let's, take, let's take the, tip, the, the, the example to which I was thinking about uh, at the time, uh, which was, uh, if I remember, in the early autumn when the two chiefs. Chief scientist and chief medical officer presented uh, their scenario, uh, and within a couple of days, after work by Professor Hennigan and by the Spectator magazine, that unwound and had to be represented. And I raised that in Parliament. I have complained about the way that statistics. Yeah, have except, been except, except, except the problem. The problem is the problem is that Professor Hennigan and his predictions are now totally discredited. Uh, and he's gone rather silent. And indeed, the spectator that was championing that events, the deaths, the real people dying, the real people getting long COVID have disproved your claims that these statistics were being misrepresented. And therefore, that's why Michael Gove is asking you to apologise. Are you prepared to apologise? My comments were perfectly legitimate at the time. And that's the point. What may have changed subsequently yeah. is, 
it is immaterial. You're asking me to, to, to comment on things that were said in November which were perfectly legitimate then. Yes, well, things have changed. Well, that's that's question that's questionable. But you accept things have changed. So, with hindsight, go back to my earlier question: do, do you now regret giving those interviews, and will you apologise for them, as Michael Gove has asked? No, the complaint was legitimate at the time. The way that statistics were being presented, even if subsequently deaths have ballooned, and they have, at the time those comments were perfectly legitimate. The chief whip has asked you to meet with scientific advisors, presumably he's thinking of people like Jonathan Van Tam and Chris Whitty uh, and uh, Valance. Uh, have you met with them? Are you prepared to meet with them? Uh, absolutely, I'll meet with anyone. Yes, but are you prepared uh, to meet with those people and to accept uh, the briefings that they give you? Absolutely. And are there, are there any plans now for that to take place imminently? Uh, not, that I, not, not that I'm yet aware of. And uh, do you fear that you might be suspended from the Conservative Party because there's also been criticism from the party hierarchy for your comments? Well, that would be thought crime. But, but I mean, have you been told that you are in danger of uh, suspension if you don't? I have not. I have not. OK. Now, I want to ask you about vaccinations, because, as you know, the, the two people we showed you being interviewed with in that report, Louise uh, Canfield and Del Bigtree, are both campaigners against uh, vaccines. Uh, would you, uh, when the opportunity arises, will you have personally a COVID vaccine? Yes, absolutely. Uh, I am evangelical in my support for vaccination. That was clear from the question that I put to the Prime Minister yesterday. Even the most cursory examination of the blogs on my website will see my enthusiasm for the vaccination programme. Again, things that I've said in Parliament. And so, again, do you then regret the fact that you, by appearing, and we saw uh, Del Bigtree talking about how honoured he was to speak to you and the rest, do you regret that you helped, uh, you know, actually uh, give credibility to those organisations which you spoke to? I don't believe I have given credibility. I spoke to them on the issue of the lockdown. I didn't, we, never, we, we never touched on the issue of vaccination. I had no idea that Del Bigtree, who I'd never heard of before, had any uh, previous on vaccination. So the reality is I stuck to the, 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 the brief that I was given. I was asked about lockdown and I talked about lockdown. What do you say to people who are now going into hospitals and, and protesting and saying that patients should be released and that there's no such thing as COVID? I think they're nutty. Nutty? Nutty, yes. It's clear that there is COVID. It's clear that we're, uh, we have a major health problem. Uh, but I dispute the, the, the chosen policies that we've dealt with. It's perfectly legitimate. There's nothing that I have said in these encounters that I'm not on the record as having said in Parliament. OK, and would you do an interview again with uh, Dale Bigtree or Save Our, Our Rights UK? Uh, I would be rather cautious about that. And uh, just finally, um, yesterday, uh, the announcements from the Prime Minister amount to an extension of this third lockdown into March. Do you support that in the present circumstances? No, I've been against lockdown from the start. Uh, but I did think we'd made significant progress yesterday with the uh, Prime Minister announcing that he would be producing the plan. And what I thought was particularly helpful from the Prime Minister yesterday was he assured me that there would be no mission creep beyond the need to reduce hospital admissions, that the key metric here is progress in vaccination particularly with the vulnerable groups who would likely to be hospitalised if they were to become infected. That is the key to ending the lockdown. What about wearing masks in public places? Do you support that? I've never supported that. I made that clear from the, absolutely the first. 
Uh, I believe government did it for the best of possible motives, uh, but I disagree with it. I voted against it, but hey, it's a democracy. I was on the losing side, and so I wear my mask as required. Uh, Sir Desmond, um, you know, you're a public servant, you've been a minister, no one would question your integrity, but it does seem that your message to the public is going against the very traditional one of uh, better safe than sorry. Well, <laughs> the fact is, we are sorry. The reality is that we've been in from some form of lockdown in three iterations uh, throughout almost the last year, and still we have 100,000 deaths. And we have done enormous damage to our children's education and to uh, the economy. So it's perfectly legitimate for me as a politician to make a counter argument to have said that actually I think there were different things, different policy options that we should have pursued. And to even if I speak for a minority, do we still believe in freedom of expression in this country or not? I mean, well, you've raised the possibility of my being we're, suspended we're, we're, for saying these things. Well, that's up to your party, but we're very happy uh, to hear your views. But I, I, I do want to put it to you that had you been listened to, most scientific analysis would be that many, many more people would have died uh, or had this uh, serious disease as a result. And uh, therefore, you know, many people might think you might regret some of your past comments. Well, that's a, that is a perfectly legitimate debate to have. But equally, there are, you know, there are literally scores of thousands who have, uh, including clinicians and scientists, who signed the Great Barrington Declaration. You know, it's an argument, a legitimate argument to be had. Well, it was the argument about Sweden, for example, but we know Sweden now has had very bad outcomes. So, I'm, I mean, I'm just puzzled by, if you like, uh, your refusal to benefit from hindsight. Well, I, I, I've, just, I've just raised hindsight to you. We have had... We have had lockdowns and we've had 100,000 deaths and we've had huge damage to our economy and the life chances of young people and our children's education. That strikes me as perfectly legitimate to say, was there another way of having gone about this? OK, so just on that point of Michael Gove's, he's asked you to apologise for your past comments. Are you prepared to do that? I have a great deal of respect for Michael Gove. I, uh, on, on occasion, I backed him for uh, the leadership uh, and I have worked with him closely in the Cameron administration and I will always reflect on his comments. But I'm not clear as to what I'm being asked to apologise for. Uh, and I just wonder if he has fallen for that Sky News headline, Senior Tory tells anti-vaxxers to carry on and, uh, and indicates his support, which is a monstrous distortion of the truth. Sir Desmond Swain, thank you very much indeed for joining us. Well, let's go now to our political correspondent, uh, Joe Pike. Uh, does that uh, draw a line under the matter, do you think, Joe? I don't think it does. If you wanted to summarise that interview with Sir Desmond, I suppose it was uh, no apologies, no regrets. The only regret really seemed to be uh, uh, the fuss that all of this has caused. The problem for Boris Johnson is Michael Gove has made it very clear what he should do, which is to apologise and retract those comments. Sir Desmond doesn't seem to uh, want to do that. And therefore, what does Boris Johnson do next? There is pressure on uh, him now, the Prime Minister, to suspend the whip from Sir Desmond, even though Michael Gove didn't say that would necessarily be the next step. The the problem Boris Johnson has is, firstly, the government have been focusing on uh, compliance on the key public health messages so much over the past few weeks. And we do see these very uh, worrying statistics over the past few weeks in terms of hospitalizations and deaths. But in contrast, Boris Johnson knows that Sir Desmond's views on lockdown restrictions are shared by other backbenchers. There are other conservatives who are worried about the impact on, eco on the economy and also the impact on personal freedoms. Of course, there is this COVID recovery group led by the former chief. Chief Whip Mark Harper and also uh, Steve Baker, a prominent Brexiteer. So now I suppose it is over uh, to Boris Johnson to decide what to do next and his uh, Chief Whip. But as you say, if uh, Sir Desmond wanted to draw a line under this whole saga, I think he's done the very opposite. 
And uh, meanwhile, the uh, political event today related to COVID is the Prime Minister going to Scotland in spite of being told by First Minister Nicola Sturgeon uh, that his journey wasn't necessary. Uh, very much a tussle between uh, Holyrood and Westminster. Yeah, I don't think that's necessarily bad for either side. 